Hi, I'm Doug Walker from Channel Awesome. At the end of our most popular show, Nostalgia Critic, we always do a charity shout-out encouraging people to donate. While they've done well, we realize not everybody's in a financial situation where they can give. But everybody at some point or another can give time. So every month we're gonna try and show a new charity or organization that you can help out with. There's so many people in difficult circumstances, but thankfully there's always people who are willing to help. And you can be one of them. Whether it's volunteering or lending a helping hand, we're here to show you what you can do. I'm Michelle Zerkowski, and I'm with the Oak Park River Forest Food Pantry. And how long has this place been here? It's been open for 40 years. You're celebrating the 40th We're celebrating year this our year. 40th anniversary this year. Our mission is to end hunger. So we do all we can to do that. Our biggest program, I think it's in our name, people are most familiar with it, is the food pantry. So that's a system where people come in, they shop for groceries, they leave with about a week's worth of food, um, and they can come once a month. Hunger exists beyond the four walls of this building, and so we try to reach hunger where it is. One of the things is the home delivery project, and that is for people who physically can't make it into the pantry. So a lot of elderly people, disabled people, people with mental health disabilities that can't come in so we uh, call them up ask them what they want to eat put together uh, you know several bags worth of groceries and deliver it to their home hi I'm Ricardo Garcia and I'm the pantry and a volunteer manager here at the Oak Park River Forest Food Pantry now if someone wants to volunteer uh, what process do they have to go through I mean there's a lot of various ways you can volunteer mm -hmm. but let's say they want to come here and help out yeah so individual volunteers who are interested basically will have to go through an orientation where we explain what our mission is, what our vision is, and the values that we hold here at the pantry. And uh, also explain the portal. We have a volunteer portal where every volunteer gets their own you know, personal login and is able to see the schedule and see how they want to get involved. We also have a program in the summer. Uh, kids, you know, that get free and reduced lunch during the school year. When summer's on, there's no school, there's no food for those kids. So we have a variety of summer programs that are targeting those children to make sure that they get food. When we have people come in to shop at the food pantry, they wait in this large waiting room. Uh, and sometimes people have to wait quite a while. If we've got 100 or 150 people coming on a day, you're gonna wait a little bit. If you're here waiting for your chance to shop, then one of the things that we do is sneak in some education. So we, unique among pantries in the region, have a nutrition education program. And so we have a couple dietitians, we have several dietetic interns, that come in and they will do a presentation on a particular topic one month. So it might be um, diets that are good for hypertension. And then they'll do perhaps a food sample with food from the food pantry. They'll give some recipes, they'll talk to people about what their disease states are and what they know about diet. Um, and then help people shop through that way. What are some of the various different ways that people mm -hmm. can volunteer? Absolutely, and so volunteers are able to choose whether they want to be involved with clients directly, so those are client-facing shifts, and so, or if they just want to be, like I call it, backstage. They want to help bagging, sorting through donations. When we have food drives, we always have a big need for groups or many volunteers to come and help us check every date, every you know condition of every product. We also offer cooking classes a few times a year, and we do take people to stores to actually give them a tour of a store and say this is how you shop when you're looking to manage your diet for diabetes on a SNAP budget. SNAP is the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program food stamps. You were talking uh, before about something you were going to start mm -hmm. along those lines that sort of shows what foods you can kind of have in bulk and what are yeah, not the yeah, best yeah, to have yeah, in bulk yeah. with the, right. it the red, the, yellow, it's green. The, it's the SWAP programs. It's a traffic light system. Like red foods are things that you should stay away from. Uh, yellow foods are things that you should eat, but in moderation, and green foods are things you could have all the time. So a green food would be all of your fresh fruits and vegetables. And a yellow food might be um, a protein, like you peanut butter, for instance. It's a protein, you need some of it, but it's also fairly high in fat and salt, so you don't want to eat a ton of it. And then red foods would be, you know, pie. Stuff right? we, we shouldn't should eat, but no, we, we usually shouldn't do, eat yeah. it all the time, but, you know, once in a while, it's fine. When I came into this, I mean, obviously, I know what food pantry is, but mm -hmm. I didn't know too much detail about it. There's a lot of things I found out. Like, I didn't know you could actually, there's like a menu you can choose from of yeah. stuff. And I always thought, well, whatever it is, there is, that's kind of what you're given, but they can actually go and choose what they like you look out for allergies as well right. and stuff like that what's a perception that people probably have about food pantries that aren't true or what's something that maybe people 
yeah. aren't aware of when they come to a food pantry. I think that people often think it's a really sad and you know dour place, um, but it's not. This is a really friendly, welcoming place. We often have a musician that plays for people while they're That's waiting cool. in the waiting room. There's this interactive aspect where you're learning something new when you come. People get to shop on their own. So we have um, categories of products. So for instance, there's a beans section and there's a meat meal section and people can choose within those sections and it matches up to their family size. So we try to focus on equity in those kinds of ways, making sure that it's fair across the continuum of people that we serve. There must be a lot of interesting stories here, people that want to help out. What are some of the most like amazing stories you've heard? The musician, that he comes in twice a month and plays for our clients for free just because he wanted to give back to the community in that kind of way. We had a woman recently, her company, instead of giving um, holiday gifts to their clients, decided what they would do was support their employees their passions around nonprofits. And so they gave each person a certain amount of money and said, you know, donate this in our behalf. And mm -hmm. so what this person did was did a cooking demonstration and provided some of the food from that demonstration to all of the clients and then got so engaged in it from there, she ended up buying cookbooks for people. She's now volunteering in the home delivery program every month. She recruits a bunch of people around that. It's interesting to me how people can have a little, one little entree in and then get so excited and keep building on in different ways. Somebody gave me a journal, they're like, you should keep a journal of all the cool things that happen. That's so cool. Right? Exactly, right, because there's so much that happens in here. And one of the things that, uh, for me, really touches me, I live in this community, is to see how uh, this is literally, literally the definition of community. You see groups, you know, it's just, it's almost like a, it's a good problem to have. Everybody jumps in. Anything that happens, the government shutdown happen, everyone jumps in. Such an incredible energy that we have in this community. Same thing with the food drive, same thing with the holidays. Everyone wants to volunteer, everybody wants to donate. And to me, that's like one of the coolest things that I've learned in these three years that this community has really surprised me. You know, it's just really surprising to see how interested, how eager, how uh, compassionate this community really is. That's one of the things I love about this with uh, both the volunteering and just people donating stuff mm -hmm. is there's all sorts of various ways that people can help out. Like the musician, who would have thought, yeah, you know, that, that right. that's, but right. that's a such a pantry. great thing. Yeah. Now, this organization has a ton of various ways you can volunteer. What are just a handful of those ways? Because I know there's right. a ton. For all of the programs that we have, there are we, there's a need for volunteers, right? For the food pantry itself, when people are shopping, through that whole food pantry. We use about 60 volunteers every Saturday for that process. Drives, food drives or diaper drives that people do. Some people really like to interact with people and so they'll want to volunteer at the food pantry itself so they can help somebody shop for instance. Uh -huh. um, and there are some people that really like a more background sort of position and so they might be doing things like at the home delivery packing up the bags to deliver to people. People also can't buy any kind of toiletries for food stamps so sometimes we'll have people do drives around around like razors and shaving cream, which you need if you want to have a job, right? Yeah. But you know, you can't buy that with food stamps. Mm -hmm. So, you know, things like that are various ways that people can engage on multiple different levels. What are some of the best times that people can volunteer? Absolutely. We are lucky that we have, again, a lot of opportunities. So people can, as I mentioned, some of the things that they can do, they can also go to the different rescue partners. We have 15 different rescue partners. And rescue partners are the grocery stores here in the neighborhood that are donating food. They're donating on average about 15,000 pounds per month so I need people to go pick it up I need people to literally take the time to go to these grocery stores you know uh, all of them Whole Foods and Jewel Oscos and all those places and go uh, in the afternoons every Wednesday afternoon we have our distributions and as I mentioned it's 45 volunteers that come and then Saturdays double that so Saturdays about 90 volunteers come from 8 a.m. all the way to about 1 p.m. so for us those, those families who have jobs or have you know school or anything like that is Saturdays a perfect opportunity to come and spend you know three hours with us doing something that is very meaningful but also meeting you know other members of the community and engaging in that way an easy thing is to come to an event right so we have a big concert event in the fall this spring we've got a great event coming up which is the healthy chef challenge so it's kind of like 
chopped meets the food pantry. Mm. So what we do is we give people food from the food pantry um, and it's a surprise. There are chefs and they compete to see who can make the most delicious meal oh, out of the cool. food pantry thing. Yeah, And we give them, I think, a couple days notice on what most of the items are, but then there's a surprise. And so last year, the evil surprise was SpaghettiOs. <laughs> is, is it like Iron Chef? That's like the yes. secret ingredient yeah, they exactly. have to use? Like SpaghettiOs! Exactly. It was SpaghettiOs, <laughs> uh, which was tragic for some of these chefs, but, uh, <laughs> but it was super fun. You can become a monthly donor, you can attend any of our other events. You know, a lot of groups, too, to volunteer as a group, which is a really interesting way to do things. So we have corporate groups that come in and do sort of like team building, bonding exercises. We have church groups, congregations of various sorts that volunteer together. So there are those kinds of options where you can, you know, bond with your friends or your community in a broader way while also giving back to a broader community. There's so many people that are like, what are we going to do today? I don't know, you know, they can't think of anything. And it's like, if, if you're going to just be laying around doing nothing, it's like just coming somewhere and doing something so easy, like you said, just packing oranges or just moving stuff right. or getting it's like it can be helping people you yeah know, helping absolutely. A great organization. and then you learn more about what the issues are in your community 15 percent of the population of our communities is food insecure mm. something people don't know we also serve 13 zip codes so we serve the west side of chicago as well where food insecurity rates are up to like 37 percent so it's a huge issue in our area, but one that often goes under the radar because you can't see a hunger person. That education and that broader community understanding I think is an important part of the work that we do as well. Talk about this kid that saw there weren't many diapers available and just sort of took this idea and ran with it. This story is amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we had, this was many years ago. So I did a presentation at a um, real estate agency. And the woman came, went home and she was talking to her sister who had a young child about that. And she was one of the things that surprised her was you couldn't buy diapers with food stamps. And so their, this little boy, Aiden, was there listening to this. I think he was six at the time. And he got very upset about it. And so he went to his room, got his piggy bank, and came back to his mom and said, can you take this money and buy diapers? Th this is like people. out of a Hallmark movie. I know. <laughs> the next year he decided he wanted to do it again. And he had figured out on his own, so now he's like seven, that adults sometimes need diapers too. Uh, so he asked his mom to buy some adult diapers. And then he's just continued to build this program. I think he got a lot of positive feedback like what we're doing right now, right? He's turned it into a whole um, fundraising campaign he does every year. This year he drove up with a U-Haul full of diapers. Man. Every size of diaper, every size of child diaper, every size of adult diaper. And, and didn't you say like he also threw out like the opening pitch at a he game did. or something? Yeah, yeah, he threw out the opening pitch at the Sox game a couple of years ago. What is the Surplus Project? You were talking uh, about that earlier. the Surplus Project, yeah, no, this is awesome. So we have, um, our main goal is to end hunger, but we also are very concerned about food waste. And so one of our priorities to, is to make sure there's as little waste as possible. And one of the programs that we've developed, I think it's now five years old, is called the Surplus Project. And so what we do is we partner partner with cafeterias. We partner with a number of hospitals and some university and high schools. And at the end of the day at the cafeteria, there's food left over. And instead of throwing it out, we now have them package it into individual meals. So then those meals are distributed to us and we also pass them on to other agencies that serve people that are food insecure. So it's a way to get food out of the waste stream to people who need it and in a really convenient form. At the end of the day, I don't want to go home and prepare an entire meal with dried beans and all the beautiful food that we give people. Sometimes I just need some convenient food if I've had a late meeting and so for people that we serve who might work in the evening, now they can come home and they get like a pre-made meal, which is a uh, something that they wouldn't be able to afford on their own, but is this wonderfully nutritious food that would normally have been thrown out because people didn't know what to do with it. I think it's wonderful not only what, what you do here, but that just so many people that want to give and so many yeah. organizations want to give and just every little thing, an individual right. wants to give, a group wants to give, uh, and you utilize all of it. I can just say I, I had it's kind of different ideas of what a food pantry was like, kind of yeah. what you said. I mean, it's like you always think, oh, it's going to be kind of like a, a downer place, but you're doing right. good. But, right. but it is very positive. Yeah. It is very upbeat, and there's so many various ways that people can help out and volunteer. If they want to volunteer or they want to donate, when you look right the camera and tell them where they can go online. www.oprf, like for Oak Park River Forest, foodpantry.org. Awesome. Thank you so much again. Thanks so much.